I'm trying to set this world record uh, in the Adirondacks. Like on day five, I actually fell 25 feet off of a cliff and uh, dislocated my shoulder, tore my bicep. And the guys I was with, they bounced. And uh, I was out there left in the wilderness, <laughs> metaphorically too. Wow. And uh, I, had to, I had to get myself out. And uh, on my way out, um, extreme pain, I was like passing in and out. And uh, God spoke, to, literally spoke to me and says, you're done fighting. I put you on this path two years ago. And uh, this is not what you're doing anymore. Um, Welcome, Welcome to the Powerful One Podcast with your host, Tommy Parker. This college dropout turned entrepreneur and high performance coach created Powerful One, One with the mission of sharing the stories of individuals who have divided from conformity and redefined success in their own terms. Join us as we dive into the incredible stories and journeys of becoming truly powerful. Welcome to the Powerful One Podcast. I am your host, Tommy Parker, and the Powerful One Podcast was created to showcase the stories of individuals who have divided from the conformity of worldly things and religious traditions to find their power through the Powerful One himself, Jesus Christ. And so this podcast is all about the testimonies and the stories of people who have found themselves through finding God. And now without further ado, this episode, I am joined with special guest Mike King. Mike King is a father, a husband, and a powerful man of God. And after reaching his goal of becoming a professional mixed martial artist and fighting for the UFC, Mike had since shifted his sights on an outdoor lifestyle, including mountain climbing, guiding, and becoming an endurance athlete. After one day being lost in the wilderness, Mike turned his life into a walk with God. Mike's new goal is to help people reconnect with their creator through his creation, as well as minister to people through his company, michaelkingministries.com. Mike is continuing his walk with God daily and becoming an ordained minister and a continued disciple of Christ. And in this episode, we talk about the crazy story of how me and Mike got connected. We talk about his run with the UFC, overcoming shame and guilt, getting left in the wilderness all alone, his wild encounter with God in the mountains, Christianity being a relationship, not a religion, not focusing on the fleshly things, and finally, what Mike has coming up in the future, and so much more. So here it is, guys, episode 53 with Mike King. Powerful One Podcast, what is up, everybody? I am joined by my friend Mike King, and I'm so honored to have him here. Mike, how are you, brother? Ah, dude, I'm doing well. Uh, just excited to talk to you about God, man. I, I'm excited too, man. Anybody who's on fire like God, like yourself, man, I'm just so, and there's so much more, you know, to, to the story, which I'm going to get into in a minute and kind of lay the groundwork for this. But no, man, I just, just seeing who you are and what you're doing for the kingdom and everything, man, um, is so inspiring. And just a quick background, you know, on me and Mike's relationship. So, oh, wow. We were just talking about it a second ago, but I've known, I say known, right? Like I've been following Mike's journey slash life now for over seven years when he was first entering on the ultimate fighter in the UFC the season I sent him a Twitter DM and I said hey Mike I'm a, I'm a big fan I've been watching you for, for a little while now good luck on ultimate fighter man I'll be pulling for you you know you responded just a super nice dude and um, I just remember watching you and always being a fan of yours and then we both ended up you know both came from martial arts now we're, we both ended up getting into you know endurance running um stuff like that and now man to see the, kind of the path we're on in the trajectory i'm so fascinated man by by where you're at today and just the journey and who mike king is man and what you're all about so just honored to have you in the studio man and honored to just get a little bit of uh your testimony today man yeah right on i'm looking forward to it awesome man so yeah i'll bring you in really mike um I'm just curious, man, you know, you can briefly touch on your background, but you know, I'm so fascinated by by where you're at today, man. So really just, you know, who is Mike King and, and kind of give me a little bit of your story, man, and give the listeners just a little bit of an end to, you know, who Mike King has been and really who he is. Right. Yeah. Mike King. Uh, wow. It's been a long road. Uh, I, I grew up in a small town, um, played, played high school football, was a, you know, a standout athlete, uh, was a first team all, 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 all state selection. I uh, went to college to play football and, uh, you know, I, I was living the worldly life, uh, partying, um, women, womanizing, the whole deal. Um, ended up 
after college, I didn't want to get like an adult job. So uh, I had a friend of mine kind of direct me towards the UFC uh, or MMA, like you said. And then uh, I ended up in the UFC, you know, the, the cream of the crop. Um, but I was still living the way that I lived in high school and college. And uh, eventually, you know, I got popped for steroids and uh, a failed, failed a drug test on the world level. And uh, it all came crashing down. Um, I ran around the woods for a while, uh, trying to find myself. And uh, that's the first time that God really connected with me was out there in the mountains. And just like, you know, you've got the Bible has tons and tons of mountain men. One of them obviously being Jesus. Every time he had something he needed to do, he would go up to the mountain and pray, right? And uh, similar to me is where I found him. And, and now, uh, crazy enough, I'm in divinity school. I uh, just got through my first year, uh, got all A's this year. Never in my life have I ever gotten all A's. Um, but when you're in, on fire for something and, and you're enjoying it, uh, and when you get on his path, um, it just kind of seems like the door started opening. And uh, here we are, dude. Like uh, now we're chatting. Uh, this last week uh, or this past weekend, I went and spoke to Impact City Church's youth ministry. Uh, I've been leading spiritual retreats for the last year, uh, dude. Just yeah, man. Like doors start opening. It's like when you're when you're broken and brokenhearted and lost in spirit, the Lord is near. That's what the Bible says. And uh, He was there. He lifted me back up, and He's given me a second chance, man. Praise God, man. That's a beautiful story. And, you know, it just reminds me, you know, as I take a zoomed out look on life and, you know, the people have came into my life for a season and or for a reason or for a lifetime. And I just see, you know, maybe I didn't see it then. Right. But I see it now. And and just the fact that we are still connected, you know, eight years later, no coincidence, man, it's only God. And so I'm just so, so grateful for that, man. And so I want to I want to ask Mike, what was was God something that you ever pursued when you were younger? Did you ever have a relationship with God? Did you grow up in religion? Like, what did that look like for you, I guess, before, you know, before now? Yeah. Uh, so my, my grandmother, uh, she took me to church since I was a young kid. Um, and then like 12, well, 12 and 13, I was on this wrestling team. And uh, some things happened to me that, uh, let's say, skewed my view of what good and evil were. And, um, uh, you know, I lost myself. And uh, when I got back from this wrestling trip, I actually stopped going uh, to church with grandma. And I know that hurt her, but it, 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 it's what it was. Um, and then I, I dove completely into athletics because it allowed me to hide from the shame that I was feeling. Uh, and I didn't tell anybody about this for 24 years. Uh, so, so I carried this, this shame um, for 24 years and I, and I never told anyone. Uh, but I found my fellowship with a, with a group of guys in Ohio and uh, I started to slowly share my testimony with kids. And when God starts to speak through you as a vessel, you start impacting people's lives, impacting people's lives. And uh, you, it, it just, it's so much easier to talk about. So like my encouragement for anybody out there that may have had something happen to them in their life, don't live with the shame, don't live with the guilt, actually get it out and, and share it. It's your testimony. And, uh, in Revelation, in the book of Revelation, uh, you know, when Michael was fighting, when Michael was fighting Satan and kicked him out of, and kicked him out of heaven, it, it says, the Bible says, they won by the blood of the lamb and by the strength of their te testimony. So our testimony is our power. We just got to be, we have to get past the shame and the guilt and share it with other people. And then and the, we just draw near to one another, man. It's, that's the community. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. You know, I always say like you, you have this, like you have this testimony that, you, that you've been given, right? All this, this uh, tribulation that you've overcame all this stuff. And it's like, but you know, tell your, tell your testimony from up here, right? You've overcame to get here. And like, you know, don't, don't live down here where your testimony was, but appreciate all that made you and, and be able to, like you said, impact and have an impact, man. Um, oh, praise God. It's just amazing, man. So, so talk a little bit about what that looked like, man, as you were starting to come back into relationship, what was one of that big inflection point where, where God just came into your life, man, in a radical way, like you said, in the mountains. So, uh, I, I don't know if you know this, I fought a professional Muay Thai fight in 2019. Um, yep. and, and, uh, I, I I was fully going back into mixed martial arts. I had a manager. Uh, I had a fight lined up for with Bellator MMA at Madison Square Gardens. Uh, 
And me and these guys uh, that you probably know of, uh, we were running around trying to set this world record uh, in the Adirondacks. And uh, it was our third attempt uh, at it. And on day five, I actually fell 25 feet off of a cliff and uh, dislocated my shoulder, tore my bicep. And the guys I was with, they bounced. And uh, I was out there left in the wilderness, <laughs> metaphorically too. Wow. And uh, I, had to, I had to get myself out. And uh, on my way out, um, extreme pain, I was like passing in and out. And uh, God spoke, to, literally spoke to me and says, you're done fighting. I put you on this path two years ago. And uh, this is not what you're doing anymore. Um, and the, the odd thing is, too, when we were running around the woods, the guys I was running with, they were saying to me, like, you know, be careful. You've got this fight coming up. Your arms and your shoulders are, are going to make you money again. And it just fell off. And I kid you not, 15 minutes later, I'm laying crumbled in a mess at the bottom of this cliff. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, dude, I've got the video of it. It's wild because it's just like this extreme. Once it, once he spoke to me, because you know, he, the Bible always says he shows up, right? And like uh, in this uh, anointed look with all these white, with white all around me, but it's not really like that. It's like a whisper. God whispers to you. And as I'm walking, uh, he's just whispering. He's like, you're done fighting. You have your, you have your path. I've put you on the path. And uh, he, it's wonderful when you can start to put those dots together and really see where your trajectory is going. Man, what a what a radical thing! I didn't know that, man. I knew you guys. Were, I knew you were you had your fight, and I didn't know you were getting back into it fully like that, man. That's such a a radical thing, man. You know, I had a similar, you know, one just to touch on this, man. I uh, I ended up, you know, pursuing Muay Thai, but then when COVID happened, man, I ended up going down to Florida to become a professional professional wrestler. And, you know, when I came back, I remember just, I was going on one of these nightly walks and I was just so excited, you know, for when shows open back up and, and God just said, you're, you're done in, in, in athletics. Like you, he's like, I I'm trying to help you. They'll you know, get pulled away from this so that you can step into something more powerful. And so I relate to you so much on that, Mike, I didn't even know that part, man. And just like, you know, for me too, my whole athlete, my whole identity was like an athlete, man. And, and well, so, been. Yeah, it's crazy, man. And so I'm so curious, like, man, for that deep inflection point, man, where God spoke to you on that mountain, where you were just at this low, like, you know, what, where do you go from there, man? You just get this, this word from God. He just spoke so clearly to you, man. Like, you know, wh where did that next, uh, that next little while look like for you, man? So, uh, I have, uh, I, I, I was, a uh, okay. So I guess to go back to college, this is where this started. Um, I, I played college ball and, uh, one of my, he was a fraternity brother of mine as well, ended up being a pastor. Um, his name's just pastor, Justin Ross. He, he, he brought he started impact city church in uh, Columbus, Ohio. And uh, he got his girlfriend who is now his wife and also the assistant or co-pastor at the church. They got pregnant uh, while they were in college. And, uh, Justin, me and Justin went different ways. Uh, he was having a kid. Uh, he found God. And he's been now a Christian for 16 years and he's had a church for seven years. And uh, he got the nudge from the Holy Spirit dude, to reach out to me um, and say, hey, man, I think you're hurting <laughs> figuratively and literally hurting wow. at the time. And he was like, I'd like to come up and see you. And uh, we went out in the Adirondacks and he testified to me. Um, about the book of Matthew, where, you know, before Jesus started his ministry, he went up into the mountains and he was tested three times by the devil. And uh, he t testified to me about his life and where his life had been. And uh, that was the moment because what we don't understand is that we need guides when we start our spiritual journey, because we are babes and we're babes. The Bible says that we're babes in our, in our faith. And we need someone that's been doing this for a long time to kind of show us the direction. Um, and God put the right man in my life at the right time in my life, literally the exact moment I needed him. And uh, I, I couldn't look past all of that. Uh, it's easy, I think, sometimes for us to just like brush this, these little coincidences off. But there are no coincidences in life. And uh, once, like I said, once you start to put the pieces together, man, like you can't deny that this is a, a real thing. The Bible is the living word. It speaks to you in every moment. And, and we just have to be willing to listen. And then the next thing is to renew your mind so that you're able to actually 
follow what he's trying to tell you because that's the that's the scary part like you hear something crazy what the world will tell you is crazy to actually follow that path that seems crazy to people to drop everything and start something new uh but that's what faith is man that's like that's the point in faith that's amazing, man. That's amazing. There's there's so much you said there that, that I just love so much. And, you know, that's the thing too, man. As I started to, you know, become like a mindset coach and get all this self-awareness, you know, w- with awareness is such a, a powerful thing because once you're aware of something, you can't turn that off, man. You know, once you've seen something, you can't unsee it. And so I started getting all this awareness and I started looking back at my past and I said, no, 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 you, you've came too late to tell me these are coincidences, right? Like, I get, like, this is, it's God, it's the living word, like you're saying. And so it's so powerful to see, you know, when the, the right people, the right place, the right time, you know, the exact time you need it, and you just see God move, you can't unsee that, right? And so I think that's something that's so powerful that, that people maybe convince themselves that it's not God, or maybe it's a coincidence. But when you have the awareness to see that happening so much, so much, so much, eventually you're like, I can't unsee that, right? Yeah. And, and, and the more frequent it happens now, uh, once you've made the decision to follow Christ, um, it happens more often because you're actually listening. It's not like he's having to hit you over the head with a two by four or push you over a cliff. <laughs> it, it can be just while like you do your nightly walks. Uh, I do my, my nightly runs wow. and that's when I speak to God. Uh, that's when he talks to me. And, um, once you create that rhythm in your life, uh, where, when God knows when to show up. So like, you do your prayer in the morning, he'll show up. If you do it every day, it's about creating a rhythm though. And once you get in sync with that rhythm, dude, like you're flowing with it, man. It's such a beautiful thing. That's amazing, man. You know, one thing, Mike, that I relate to you when you said, you know, about going to church and then kind of straying away from it, like it wasn't what you wanted. You know, I think a lot of times what, what for me is so glaring now is that a lot of times what's missing, like I, I got so out of touch with what the church was doing when I was younger, because you know, like there was no relationship, there was no foundation that, that I could build upon with some structure of a religion. And so I'm curious, man, like, if you don't mind just talking about, you know, the importance of like that actual relationship, and, and what maybe you were missing when you were younger, and I don't want to speak for you, man, but just the, the kind of concept of, of, of really a relationship before a religion, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. Uh, I actually believe that uh, I believe Christianity is not religion. I believe it is relationship because you have a you have an intimate relationship. God is like a friend. When people tell me they don't know how to pray, I'm like, you're just talking to a buddy. Uh, like it's your it's your dad. It's your father. Talk to him like you would talk to your dad. You know. Um, but t- to get to your point, um, so growing up and I think it was probably the eighties and the night for me, I just dated myself. So uh, in the the nineties, um, what we're talking about is legalism and what happened, uh, most churches focused on the, the, the legality, the rules that you had to follow and what they got away from was grace. That is what the new Testament talks about is grace. Mm. We are, we are saved through faith by grace. And that's the only way it is. It's, it's a relationship. It, it's not, I have to do all these things. Nobody's perfect. And that's what scares people away from religion is, oh, I'm, I, I'm a bad person. So there's no way that God would accept me. Well, that's not true because we, like I said, saved by faith through grace. And grace is that thing that, that we, we, we don't have enough of, but God has plenty and we fall every single day, but if you're willing to repent and tell God and confess about your sins in your prayers, he'll give you another chance. Like the, the process of sanctification. So yeah, now we're just getting deeper. Into this Come stuff. on, Mike. So, uh, so uh, what we're talking about is the day you are saved, the process of sanctification starts. And sanctification is a walk with Christ. He doesn't expect you to be perfect. Sanctification is becoming more Christ-like. So if I start way, way on this side, I got a long way to go, but God is willing and wants to help you move down that, that scale. So the more, as long as we're trying and apologizing for when we fall, he will continue to pick us up and help us continue moving forward. 
That's so good, man. I think it's, it's one of those amazing things. Like once you do have that perspective on it, where it's not like, you know, don't condemn yourself for, for sinning, for doing all this stuff. Like we sin, but that's why like, man, when Jesus died on the cross, like there's a reason that me and Mike don't go in the forest and sacrifice lambs anymore because the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world means that like me and Mike don't have to make a sacrifice when we sin because Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice. And so it's so beautiful what you said right there, man. Like it's just that progression. He picks you up and you keep moving on. And so so, you know, just talk about, you know, where, where you've came to in your faith, man, and just the, the man of God that you are today and really just, just all the different things that have um, kind of came to, to be, man. Yeah. So um, it, it, during 2020, uh, I, I had a retreat business uh, that I was doing some things with other people. I was doing some speaking engagements, but it was more mind body uh, because I was afraid to put the, the spirit into it. And um because I around here in the Northeast, let's be frank, uh, there's not a whole lot of people that vibe with that. Uh, right. So, I, and I was focused on the world, and I wanted to be able to provide and make money for my family. So I took it out, and when I did that, it all kind of crumbled in 2020. It's like the the parable of the house that is built on sand and not stone. When when the storm comes, it washes away that foundation, and then the house falls. And that's exactly what happened to me in 2020. I had a, a great training business. I had a great retreat business. And all these things were on the way up. And then 2020 happened and wiped it all away. And that's the second time God spoke to me. He was like, all right, it, this, is, this is it. Like, let those guys go where they're going. And uh, we're going to focus on you. And uh, he told me to go back to, to school. So I, I enrolled in, in seminary. And here I am. Um, preaching the word of God on a consistent basis. There's a, there's a, a, a private group called victory in Christ on Facebook. That's got about 500 members now. And every morning uh, someone gets on there and shares their testimony and does a devotional at 7 AM and people log on, man. And it's just, uh, it's God is moving in that group. <laughs> and oddly enough, um, I shared a message and got kicked. I'm now disabled from Facebook. Uh, I have, I can't get back on. They blocked my phone number, three of my emails, but this group, it was already going. I already had like other admins doing it. So this group is actually taking off more because of it. So like, uh, the, yeah, dude, the man of God, right? So we'll talk th briefly about this. So the book of Ecclesiastes, this is like a big deal for me because when I was fighting, uh, I was focused on worldly things in, tw in 2019. Uh, with my old company tap, I was focused on worldly things. And the more you fill yourself up with those worldly things, the, the bigger the void is when those things are gone. Wow. So the book of Ecclesiastes talks about uh, Ecclesiastes one is about vanity, vanity, it's all vanity. It talks about how all the streams run into the ocean. And we're talking about worldly things, right? All the streams run into the ocean, but the ocean is never full. It's like vapor. It's like smoke. So the more that you pump into you of worldly indulgences, when those things are gone, you're empty. You're like a balloon. Like you pump it up, right? And it has form. But as soon as that air is gone, you're like this limp piece of rubber that is nothing. It's trash. You can throw it away, right? So the book of Ecclesiastes is a little dark, uh, but, it's, but it's all truth. Like it, it's all so real that it... it, it, it it is sad. It's a sad book, but if you read it and you read it in the right context, uh, it's talking about worldly indulgences and, and how in the afterlife, you know, we don't have this. Uh, and most people, when they don't know faith, uh, they get caught in the, the, the fleshly existence and aren't focused on the eternal life process. So that little tiny piece, when you, let's say you have like a mile long rope and you have this little tiny piece that's your fleshly existence. And you got like miles. Our, our finite brains, our human brains can't even concept what eternal life is. So we get stuck on, on this fleshly existence. Man, that's so good. That, that, and you're so right, man. I'm glad you touched on that. The book of Ecclesiastes, you know, for me, was so sobering, right? It's like, it almost like makes you look in the mirror and you're like, wow, I've actually been living so fleshly, right? And so, but you know, I, I do the same thing. I always say like, you know, here, the, our time here to me is like an ice cube melting in a, in a cup of coffee or like, a, or a glass of water, right? Like it, it's, it's, but it's so- I'm gonna steal, I'm gonna steal that. <laughs> 
Hey, I, I stole it from one of the brothers at my church. So you could take that. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's so sobering, man, when you realize that, but it's also, it's also, once you can get past that, it's also so refreshing, man, because you have a whole renewal, a renewed sense of, you know, the, the life that you want to live. And so talk about that, man. I know that you're living a life now where you're doing speaking engagements. You talked about seminars that we talked about, um, spiritual summits that you did, you mentioned in the beginning. So talk about where that new kind of renewal and that new, um, you know, focus on the spiritual element of life, right? And not what your flesh wants. Talk about like where that's starting to lead you, man. Yeah. Um, so what I've been, yeah. So where, where God's led me is uh, crazy enough. I decided once I went to school, I, literally three days later, I got a call from someone. I did a speaking engagement in 2019 for the New York State Public High School Athletic Association. And uh, it was okay. It was all right. It's like I ran a workshop, right? And uh, they called me up like three days after and were like, would you be our keynote speaker this year? And I was like, sure. And I was like, how many people is it going to be? It was 3,000 people. And I got to testify to 3,000 people. And I, I kind of like injected the word into it. And then at the question and answer, I got to actually testify and talk about God because uh, they told me I wasn't supposed to. Uh, but I did say, if someone asked me about it, I'm going to talk about it. And sure enough, during the question and answer portion, um, God allowed me to, to testify to 3000 different people. And then where that went from was then, uh, this, this impact city church asked me to come and speak to their youth ministry. And then we started this thing called the mid summit and the mid summit is about 40 guys. Uh, the first one was about 40 guys got together and, uh, we took them out into the wilderness and it was just a five-day retreat uh, where 30 guys ended up uh, getting baptized and giving their life to Christ. And uh, it's become this thing where um, we have another one coming up and there's all, almost already 100 people signed up for it. And uh, half, I would say probably half of them don't even know Christ yet. So there's, the, harvest is, the harvest is ripe, my friend. And uh, we're, like I told you earlier, we are in this season of revival. Um, in, in the world where people are starting to see through uh, the things that are happening and on the media. I can't even believe I brought that up, but in the media and, and, and people are wanting more. They're wanting real. They're wanting something real. And uh, 2020 was that great reset. And, and uh, people really started to focus on different things in life, um, which was God. God does everything and, and he, he allows everything to happen. And it's just such a refreshing thing to see people like you, uh, doing what you're doing, dude, like, like the warriors, God is calling his warriors and, and we're stepping up, man. That's like exactly what's going on right now. Man, that's amazing, dude. And, and, and that's the thing, man, there is a revival and, you know, while the harvest is plentiful, man, the laborers are few right now, but it's so cool because you see like, you know, Mike King, like former UFC fighter, right. Former endurance athlete, like, you know, you, you see people like you, man, who, you've now you're now living for Christ, right? And you think about, you know, where you've came from in your journey, man. And it's just amazing. You, you never think about it. And so it's just so encouraging, man, for anybody listening for for wherever you came from, whatever your identity was, you know, it's just so encouraging, man, that like, that hunger is out there, man. You know, there's so many kids, you know, in, in the ministry that, that I'm working with right now, where I just like, you're right, man, they want that truth, man. But you see somebody like Mike, and I'm so grateful that you're on here, man, because, you know, they see that fruit in your life, rather, right, whether it's like, they look at where you're at now and, and see everything that you maybe gave up or that you passed by, or, or now the fact that you're living so much more fulfilled now than what you had before. And they see that fruit and, and there's a revival, man, in Jesus name. I'm so excited for, for what you're going to continue to do, man, what God's going to continue to do through you. Um, you know, what, what's some advice, man, that you can give to people who are hungry for that truth, man, who are hungry for something else, but, but they'll know which way to turn, man. What's some advice that you could give some of the listeners to, to really help with that? Yeah. Yeah. So this is probably the most important part, right? When you start your spiritual journey, uh, you need, you need somebody uh, to help you. You need a guide. The Holy spirit will guide you once you get in there but you need to know where to start. I mean, a good place is here. And then second, you need, you need a fellowship. Uh, you need a group of men or, or kids that are already living for Christ that will bring you in. And, but what, I, what you need to understand is there is discipline involved in this and you can't be upset when one of your friends tries to admonish you. 
So if you're living wrong and they tell you that you're living wrong, you have to be humble enough to accept the advice. Uh, the Bible says, um, Jesus actually said it, uh, share the gospel with everybody. This is a question I have a lot is, um, when do you walk away, right? So the Bible says, share the gospel with everybody, but it, if it is fervently rejected, brush your shoes off and walk away. So if, if you're wondering where to start, start by finding a fellowship and then live by Matthew 28, the Great Commission, and start there, man. Just start testifying to everybody that you can, and God will start filling you up. And that void that you had in your chest, it will be gone because you're doing the work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Man, that's amazing. I appreciate that advice for, for people listening and, and myself as well, man, because it's, it's just good. It's, it's good to hear. And it's, you know, it just shows you're right, man. You need, you need to be a sheep, but you also need to, to shepherd, right? You need like that, that sheep mentality where like you're being fed. And I think that's so beautiful, man. Like Mike, um, you know, what was I going to ask you, man? Um, so what excites you the most about where you're at in your walk with Christ, man, and, and going forward, you know, this, this new trajectory that you're on? Yeah, so I guess what excites me the most is that uh, God is finally trusting me to do things like this. He's finally trusting me to speak to, to the youth because let's be real, the next gen, like that's what matters. Um, the next generation of kids, man, that's, that's what matters. And he's allowing me to actually get out there and, and serve him now. And uh, the, the Bible says, again, I, I keep referring to the word, but uh, the Bible says that if, if you can be trusted with little, uh, he will trust you with with lots. If you can, if you are dishonest with little, you'll be dishonest with a lot. So, the first thing, like you said and I said, is to to be honest and real at the beginning of your journey. Get everything inside of you out so that you can be empty, and then let him fill you back up. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. So, Mike, is there anything else, man, before we wrap up? I want to be respectful of your time, man, but platform is yours, man. Anything else to wrap up the tone of this amazing podcast, brother? Oh, uh, man. Um, I mean, to, first off, to, to God be the glory. Let, let's, get, let's get that straight. Uh, Absolutely. I, I, I'm, I'm humbled that he would allow us to be a vessel for his word. Uh, and, and secondly, then, some ruthless self-promotion. Uh, we, we, we will be, uh, uh, so like I said, I got kicked off of Facebook and Instagram. Uh, I still got my verified Twitter didn't kick me off. So I still got my verified Twitter account. Nice. Uh, and that's at Mike, the man King. Uh, and then uh, my Instagram handle is be the uncommon person. Um, oh, because in a world full of, of Karens and Kins, try to be the one like Peter who stepped out of the boat and walked on water. Come on, Mike. That's amazing. I love that, man. I love that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, dude, um, I'll be having some, I have a michaelkingministry.com. No. Uh, so I, I, you can find out what's going on. We, 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 we grow groups, uh, we do the retreats and uh, we'll have a, a kid's, a kid's retreat. Well, I wouldn't say kids, like a junior high, high school retreat coming up for anybody that's interested in going out in the Adirondacks and testing their bodies and their minds man. while being connected to the spirit. That's amazing, man. I love how you're bringing a lot of what you did before in the wilderness, man, to it, because that's where, again, like you said, that's where it all started for you. And so that's amazing that you're giving back like that, man. I love it, man. Well, Mike, I'll be sure to, to link all your stuff below, man, so people can can see what God's doing it through you. And um, again, brother, just grateful to, to have you as, as a brother, man, and just taking on life with you, man. Hey, dude, we're, we're, we're living life together. That's a, that's what a Christian does. And that's how fellowships begin. So uh, I look forward to talking more to you, Tommy. I think we have, uh, I'm, I'm excited about what you're doing, dude. It's awesome. Man, I appreciate that, guys. Mike King, everybody, we are out. Later, y'all. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end. I really appreciate your support, not only for me, not only for Powerful One, but also all the guests on this on this. Uh, platform and just tuning in and being inspired and, and stay being powerful, man. So, you know, thank you again, if you watch this and, you know, excited for the future, excited. It's been a great year for powerful one, excited for everything I have coming in the future, everything with the brand, everything with my personal brand and just everything in general. So I just want to thank you guys again and be sure to, you know, share this if, if it inspired you, if it felt powerful, if you connected with it, share it with your friends, share the platform. Um, please go, if you don't mind, go subscribe on YouTube, 
go write a review on iTunes. All that stuff really means a lot. Thank you guys again, and be sure to stay tuned because every week we are coming out with a new podcast episode. Stay locked into the page, guys. Thank you. Stay powerful.